Hi, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my video all about all the books I want to read before the end of the year. So this is essentially a December TBR, but not really because I don't do TBRs, but this is just some of the books I picked from my TBR that I would really like to read before the end of the year. I have a lot of holiday coming up in this month, so I am really hoping to get to quite a lot of books. Also, please excuse the absolutely terrible lighting in this video. It's winter. <laughs> I'm filming this in the middle of the day and the lighting is still terrible so we're just rolling with it. We're rolling with it because my ring light can only do so much. So this is a bit of a mishmash of books that I just kind of went around my TBR car and the other places I stored my TBR and picked out all the books that were calling to me at the moment. So who knows if I actually get to these books. I'm such a mood reader it will really depend on what I'm feeling like in the moment but yeah these are the books that I am hoping to read in the next month. <laughs> So first up we have one that I wanted to read in October, didn't get to, and November has been very slumpy, so fingers crossed for December, and that is Timber Dark by Darren Charlton. This is the second book in the Wranglestone? Wranglestone? Yes, in the Wranglestone series, or duology. So the first book I have read, I adored, and this is its sequel. It is about a world where there has been a zombie apocalypse and we are following this very small community that is living in this lake, um, on islands on the lake, and we follow this very effeminate young man who has a crush on one of the only other young people on the islands, who's also a guy, and it is about how he is very feminine, he likes to sew pillowcases and that kind of stuff, and one day he accidentally lets one of the zombies onto one of the islands and it has to be killed and they decide as punishment the people of the islands decide as punishment he has to go to the mainland with the guy he has a crush on to deal with some of the zombies um and he also has to explore the wilderness a bit with him so it is kind of like a queer romance story set in a zombie apocalypse and it's really good i really enjoyed it i've heard the sequel's not as great and this book has been delayed a few times because of covid so that could be why but i am really really hoping that it holds up to my love of the first book and it is as good as the first book but either way i'm really looking forward to seeing how this story concludes because the first book ends with a lot of cliffhangers a lot of reveals happen and it was very much a setup for a second book so i am really hoping that i get to read this one this is actually the waterstones edition with this really cool sprayed edge and once i've read it i'm really hoping that i love it enough to keep it and put it on my sprayed edge display now we have one that I think has been on my end of the year TBR every year since I got this book and that is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. So this is a middle grade fantasy and it is actually called The Trials of Morgan, Morrigan Crow rather than Nevermore. I think Nevermore is the name of the series. So this is about Morrigan Crow, who was destined to die on her 11th birthday, but just as the clock strikes midnight and she's about to die, she gets whisked away to the secret city called Nevermore, and she is told that if she can complete four tasks using a exceptional talent, she will be allowed to stay in this magical city and not die. And so this is about her trying to get through those trials to survive. Uh, it's apparently very magical, very cosy. I've heard there's a bit of a magical school element to it and there's like a Christmas scene. So I've always wanted to read this around the Christmas festive period and I've just never gotten to it. <laughs> so I'm hoping this year I do because I actually have quite a bit of holiday where I'm going to be on holiday on my own over Christmas where everyone else I know is still going to be working. So I won't have anything better to do so hopefully I will be able to read Nevermore finally. The next one is another middle grade fantasy and that is Frostheart Escape from Aurora by Jamie Littler. So this is the second book in the Frostheart series. Again, I won't give you a summary of this one, but I will tell you about the first book. The first book I enjoy but didn't love as much as I thought I would, but I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy this book more because the first book was doing a lot of setup for the world. So this is set in this icy tundra place where um, all of the humans live in these little camps and in between the camps is these like wastelands that are filled with these kind of ice creatures that attack but there are some people who go around on these like ice skiffs between the cities for trading um, and we have our main character here who is able to communicate with the monsters out on the plains but that is considered a bad thing because people think that they might make the monsters attack so he has been kind of abandoned and he's living in this village um, and he's being raised by a yeti i think because no one else wants to raise him and one day he saves the village from an attack from the ice monsters by speaking to them but they think that he might have been trying to encourage it and so he gets banished and he ends up 
on one of the ice skiffs with some traveling traders <laughs> and it's just a bit of an adventure story i'm not going to tell you much more because i think more would be spoilers but it's fun <laughs> it's definitely a fun adventure story i really enjoyed it i think the first book i just found it kind of difficult to follow who was who because there's such a big cast of characters in this book but i think by the second book i'm going to be a bit more settled in i might need to reread the first book to read this one but i'm hoping if i can find a summary online that will be enough just to understand the the overarching plot from the first book but of course wintry tundra snowy landscape is so perfect for christmas time so i'm hoping to finally pick this up this year and if i enjoy it i'm probably then going to read this the second book this is the second book i'll probably going to read the third book uh maybe on ebook because i don't need more paperbacks right now <laughs> And then I have one more middle grade on the list, and that is The Christmas Saurus and the Winter Witch by Tom Fletcher, which is the second book in the Christmas Saurus series. I actually also have the third one, but I can't remember what it's called, and I don't know where it is. Um, but I am really hoping to read the second and third book in this trilogy, because I read the first book a couple of Christmases ago, I think, and I loved it. It was so much fun. So this one is about a young boy who is a wheelchair user, and in his letter to Santa, he wishes for a dinosaur. And in this magical world, when the letters go to the North Pole, they Santa reads them and I think somehow like something forms, like a crystal forms in the ground containing the presents and the elves have to go mine out the presents. And when the boy asks for a dinosaur, um, there's actually a dinosaur <laughs> living in the North Pole uh, called the Christmasaurus because when the elves are mining, they find an old dinosaur egg and they dig it up and it hatches and you get the Christmasaurus. And so Santa decides to send him a plushie replica of the Christmasaurus, but the Christmasaurus secretly swaps places with the plushie and ends up being the Christmas gift to the child. It's fantastical, it's very middle grade, it's very silly, and it's so much fun. It's it's very much a classic kind of modern day roll doll kind of style tale, I think, where it's kind of funny and wacky, but it has a good message to it. And I really love the first book, so I'm looking forward to reading the second and third book, and I'm hoping to maybe read that in my week's break that I have when no one else is off from work so that I can get into the real festive mood. <laughs> Then we're going a bit off piste with uh, The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis because I'm just really in the mood for moody books and this one definitely feels like a moody read. So if you've seen the Netflix show it is based on this book although I've heard it's kind of loosely based and the book is quite different but I am really intrigued by it and I do really want to give it a read. So this follows the life of Beth Harmon. At the age of eight she ends up in an orphanage and she finds two escapes while she's there. One is playing chess and the second one is taking the little pills that the orphanage give to subdue the children. And so it's about her story of becoming this chess prodigy and chess champion, but also battling addiction as she's doing so. And the Netflix show was just amazing. It was so captivating. And I was actually kind of... what, what I wanted to know more about what happens to Beth after the show finishes and I know this book won't give me that but at least I can kind of relive this, her story again in this. Beth is not a real person, many people think the Queen's Gambit is real but it's not. Um, so yeah Beth is not a real person but I, I really want to relive the story in another medium so I'm looking forward to reading this and it's a really short read so I'm thinking this could be one that I can pick up on one of my days off or on a weekend when I can just sit and read it cover to cover. And now we have a big swath of fantasies that I don't want to read because I'm in such a fantasy mood as well. First up is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This is a YA fantasy, I think. Uh, if not, it's an adult but leans YA. And this one is pitched as uh, Mulan meets Project Runway. So this one is about a young woman who dreams of being a tailor, but she's not allowed because she is a woman. And then one day her father, who is a tailor, gets a letter from the emperor saying that he wants he wants him to compete to become the new imperial tailor and so she decides to go in his place and disguise herself as a man and take part in this competition. In this competition they have to create three impossible gowns and if they manage to do so they become the new imperial tailor and she has to try and do this while also maintaining the ruse that she is a man. It sounds amazing. Mulan is like my favourite Disney movie and I loved Project Runway as a teenager so this is like mashing two things that I love and it sounds like a really nice like cosy fantasy to read 
during the winter period. I know it's not like cozy cozy but it's not but it's not like aggressive war fantasy is it? It's kind of like cozy fantasy so yeah I'm hoping to read this. I'm hoping it's not too political because I don't love political fantasies but it sounds like a really cool concept so looking forward to it. And then we have Gilded by Marissa Meyer which again I think is YA or adult that leans YA. So this is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling and I think the Rumpelstiltskin story feels very like cozy winter fantasy. Um, this one is about a young woman who is is known for telling these fantastical tales and it catches the eye of an urkling which I'm not sure what that is but I guess we find out in the book um, and he decides to sweep her away to his enchanted world and locks her in his castle and tells her that she has to uh, weave wheat into gold or pay with her life. So she then obviously is panicking and she accidentally summons uh, this man to come and help her and he offers to help her do this at a price and is a high price and she doesn't realise that she also may fall in love in the process. So I guess this is about the woman in the story falling in love with Rumpelstiltskin, which is an interesting concept because in every Rumpelstiltskin story I have ever read, he's always like a creepy little man or not someone you'd pitch as a love interest. So I'm quite intrigued to see how she does that. But the one Marissa Meyer book I have read I loved, so I'm very hopeful for this. And then I want to read Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. And yes, I know I've owned this for ages and still not read it, but it's because I am so scared I'm not going to love it and I really want to love it. So I'm hoping to read it soon. Um, this one is about two twins who I've already forgotten their names. Oh my goodness. Amelia and Vittoria, who are witches living among humans, and they have to keep that a secret. And they are very, very close to each other. And then one day Vittoria turns up dead and has been brutally murdered. And Amelia decides that she wants to investigate her murder. And she decides to use magic to do so. And while she's doing that, she meets uh, the the, the prince of hell I think one of the princes of hell who says that he's on her side and wants to help her solve the murder and so they team up and try and solve this murder so it's like fantasy murder mystery um again it feels I don't know why this feels cozy to me it's literally the princes of hell but it feels cozy it's not like throne of glass or a court of wings and ruin kind of like battles and spies and that kind of thing it it cozy I'm calling it cozy <laughs> Next we have another Elizabeth Lynn book and that is Six Crimson Cranes. Again, I know I've not read this yet but I will soon. So this one is about a princess, is, it, is she called a princess? Yes, so she's a princess and she has some secret magic in her that she's not supposed to tell anyone about and then on her wedding day it comes out and causes issues and ends up with her wedding being delayed. This draws the attention of her stepmother who decides to banish the princess and turn her brothers into cranes and she tells her that she cannot speak a word to anybody and that with every word she says one of her brothers will die and so the princess who is now penniless and has no voice because she, she can't speak um, decides to venture out and try and find her brothers to save them. It sounds good, it sounds so interesting. I think this is a retelling of a traditional uh, fairy tale, so that's really awesome. And I just really wanna read it, it sounds so good. It just sounds amazing. Everything Elizabeth Lim writes, whenever I read the summaries for it, I'm like, yeah, that sounds amazing, I wanna read that. So again, it's not too chunky, so I'm really hoping I can get to this one in the month. Um, I, I'm not sure though, this is probably one of the least likely ones because it is a duology, I think, and I don't have the second book, so mm, whether I actually will read it this month, but I would really like to. Now, the next one makes me want to hang my head in shame, but I really want to read Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. <laughs> um, I know, I am a Caraval stan. I love Caraval. One of my favourite series of all time. Legendary is one of my favourite books of all time. But that's kind of why I haven't read this series yet. I'm so scared that it's not going to live up to my love for Caraval. And so I just haven't read it yet. Um, I have no excuses. I already have the second book and I still haven't read this, but I really, really, really need to. <laughs> so this one follows Evangeline, who has this big like love for somebody, but her heart gets broken when she finds out that he's about to marry someone else. And so she makes a deal with the Prince of Hearts, who is a character from the Caraval series, to stop the wedding. And he agrees to do so in exchange for three kisses at his point of cho choosing and she agrees but after the first kiss she realizes that making a deal with him is more than she anticipated. 
I know Stephanie Cobb is writing, I know it's going to be amazing, but I'm just so scared I'm not going to love it as much as Caraval. Because what I loved about Caraval was the kind of like circusy feel of it and the puzzle of it all. And this one feels more traditional fantasy, which is why I'm more scared of it. So I don't know. I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to try and read it in December and read its sequel and hopefully I will love it. And the final book on my list is The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean. So this one is about a group of, group of people called The Book Eaters who survive only by eating books. And very, very rarely there is a mind eater born who survives from eating the minds and souls of human beings. And the main character of this book, Devon, has a child who is a mind eater. She runs away with this child so that he cannot be manipulated and used by the family as a weapon and decides to go into hiding and try and find people for her child to eat. And it's about her desperation to keep him safe, but also provide him with souls and minds to eat, but also while watching him lose a little bit of himself each time he does that. Um, and also about the fact that her family is trying to hunt her down and find her. It sounds really dark and twisted and interesting and such a unique concept that I just really want to read this. Again, it feels like one that I need to sit down and read cover to cover in one sitting, so I might save it for the Christmas holiday periods when I will have a lot of time to read, but we shall see. So that was quite the list of books, quite a lot of books for one month and my reading is very erratic month to month. There's some months I've read 16 books and other months I've read one. So it is one of those where I have absolutely no idea how many books I'm going to read in December. And so whether or not this is realistic at all is a complete question mark. But they're all the books that like, as I was looking through, I immediately was like, yes, 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 yes. Um, and I could have picked up more because there's so many books I'm excited for. I, I'm still feeling a bit slumpy but I'm starting to feel that excitement about books again. And I think it's because I've realised now that I was in my romance era for quite a few months, but I'm now transitioning back into wanting to read fantasies and horrors and other kind of books like that, like not contemporaries basically. And so that's what I'm trying to shift into. And now that I'm focusing on fantasy and horror and thrillers and that kind of stuff I am much more excited about reading again so I think I just need to allow myself to go with the flow and read the books that I am excited for in the moment. <laughs> So definitely let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, if you'd recommend me picking up any of them sooner, but also let me know what books you're hoping to read before the end of the year. And I definitely have more than this that I want to read before the end of the year and it's just not going to be possible, but we're going to try anyway. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more content from me. All of my social media links are in the description below. And if you'd like to leave me a comment to let me know you are here, leave me a snowman emoji in the comments below. Thank you again for watching. Bye.